All right, all right. Shalom, everybody. Welcome to tonight's class. My name is Brother Raphael. To my right, Brother Nah. To my left, Brother Jacob. Tonight's topic is a very controversial topic. Christians hate the Bible. They hate the Bible. Yeah, you heard it. You didn't listen. It wasn't a typo on that. No, they absolutely hate the Bible. And we're going to find out how they really hate the Bible. Because you so-called blacks and you so-called Hispanics, whose fathers are Negro and in the descent, we are the biblical Israelites. That's something they hate him. Okay. They think everybody can be Israelite. Okay. As a matter of fact, they think the Israelites are done away with. Mm. That's what we hear. We hear the Israelites are no more. You don't know who the Israelites are today. No one knows. No one knows. Is that right? Okay. All right. All right. But anyway, as, as customary, um, let's get the book of Isaiah, chapter 8 and verse 20. You know, one thing people have to understand, y'all, is the Bible is nothing but laws. Okay, from Genesis all the way through Revelation. The whole Bible is nothing but laws. And what people try to do is they try to separate the laws from Christ. Not understanding you have to couple you have to couple the laws with Christ. Okay? You know, exactly. Exactly. How can you separate the law from the law? Because Christ is the word in flesh. <laughs> so for some odd reason, people get it twisted, right? So the book of Isaiah, chapter 8 and verse 20. First, the book of Isaiah, chapter 8 and verse 20. Okay. To the law. The Bible says to the law, right? Because as you understand, like I just mentioned before, from the book of Revelation, always, I mean, excuse me, from the book of Genesis, always Revelation, you're dealing with laws, okay? Old and New Testament. Read on. The book of Isaiah, chapter 8 and verse 20. Okay. To the law. To the law. And to the testimony. And to the testimony. So now I just made a statement. I said, you have to cut the laws of Christ, right? And you just can't say, I just believe on Christ and no laws. And you just can't say, I just have laws and no Christ. Mm -hmm. That's to be coupled together. So the Re Revelation, chapter 19 and verse 10, because I don't want to make a statement and not prove it in the scriptures, okay? Precept must be upon precept. Oh, yeah, we're going to deal with precepts too, okay? <laughs> because they seem to hate precepts. Mm -hmm. Yes, they do. And we're going to deal with precepts, right? We're going, to, we're going to find out how important precepts really are according to the Bible, according to the Holy Bible. Not according to rhetoric from us, according to how it was written. Mm. So the Revelation chapter 19, verse 10. The book of Revelation chapter 19 and verse 10. Okay. And I fell at his feet uh -huh. to worship him. Right. And he said unto me, uh -huh. See thou, do it not. Right. I am thy fellow servant. Yes. Yeah. And thy brethren uh -huh. that have the testimony of Jesus, the testimony of, Christ, the testimony of Jesus, the testimony of the Christ, read, worship God, worship the Most High, because you have to understand something. Christ and the Most High is not the same entity. He said, worship God, right? He didn't say worship. He didn't just say worship any other God. Mm -hmm. The Most High God. Okay, we're gonna find out about that too because they love to push the fact to say that Christ is the Most High. Mm -hmm. You know, we hear much of that rhetoric going on, but we're going to find what the Bible says about that shortly. But read on. For the testimony of Jesus uh -huh. is the spirit of prophecy. The testimony of the Christ is the spirit of prophecy. You have to have the spirit of Christ on you to understand prophecies. If you don't have the spirit of Christ on you, precept must be upon precept. That's why we jump from book to book. And we're going to shortly find about precepts. Because for some odd reason, people get offended at precepts, okay? Because when they can't, because understand something, precept means law, straight up. It just means law, right? So let's just journey into the scriptures. Let's, let's go on a journey in the scriptures <laughs> and let's just find out a little bit about precepts because people seem to get it twisted. They think, oh, you know, you don't need precepts, you know? They get offended, highly offended. Only reason they say that is because they're trying to debunk everything we do. Okay, well, you can try it all you want. You won't stand before the doctrine. That's right. And I'm not saying that with 
boastfulness, but I'm saying with confidence. Because no one can stand before the doctrine of Christ. Mm -hmm. That's basically what it is, is the doctrine of the Christ. Mm -hmm. You're going to find out. Now, the rough, now, here's the thing that precepts. Precepts. Mm -hmm. Like I just made a statement. Precepts are laws. A precept is a law. That's what precept really means, right? Mm -hmm. So let's go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 28 and verse 9. Let's go to, let's find out a little bit about precepts. Mm -hmm. Okay? The book of Isaiah, chapter 28 and verse 9. Right. Whom shall he teach knowledge? The Bible says, whom shall he teach knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. Read on, that's the question. And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? To understand doctrine, right? Mm -hmm. Whom shall he make to understand doctrine? What doctrine is it talking about? Hold that, brother. Go to the book of Proverbs, chapter 4, verse 2. What doctrine is it talking about? Is it talking about a black Hebrew Israelite doctrine? Or is it talking about a doctrine of the scriptures? Because some people want to say, oh, the black, the black Hebrew Israelites, the BHIs, have their own doctrine. But Here's the problem. I don't see the word black Hebrew Israelite in the Bible. Mm. So guess what? You're wrong. <laughs> Excuse me? But we do know precepts are in the Bible. That's right. And we will go as it is written, right? Mm. Right, brothers? Right. Okay. All right. Let's just keep it. So, so doctrine, Proverbs 4 and 2. The book of Proverbs. Chapter 4 and verse 2. Now, Mike, this is the precept now. Because the precept to doctrine gives the definition to give you the understanding what we're talking about. Because we can't say doctrine without going to the Bible and showing precepts. Right? Right. right. Let's go to the precept to doctrine. Read on, brother. The book of Proverbs, mm -hmm. chapter 4, and verse 2. Right. For I give you good doctrine. Oh, what type of doctrine does it give us? Good doctrine. It's good doctrine. Read. Forsake ye not my law. Oh, forsake ye not my what? Forsake ye not my law. Let's find out if our Lord and Savior is on the same page. Because I don't want people to get it twisted about precepts. So let's go to the book of the St. John. Chapter 7 and verse 16. Because he said, I give you good doctrine, right? Forsake ye not my law. This is New Testament. This is our Lord and Savior, the Christ, the Messiah, the King of Kings, the King of Israel. Okay? Now, St. John, chapter 7 and verse 16. The book of St. John, chapter 7 and verse 16. Yes, sir. Jesus answered them uh -huh. and said, my doctrine is not mine. Oh, wait a minute. He says, his doctrine is not his, right? Mm -hmm. But remember in Proverbs 4 and 2, mm -hmm. the precept now that we had to go to to get the understanding, mm -hmm. what was the doctrine he's talking about? Mm -hmm. Read on, brother. But his that sent me. Oh, wait a minute. Because who gave us the law? The most high through Christ. So he says, I give you good doctrine. Right? Mm -hmm. And Christ says, the doctrine I preach is not mine. Mm. So Christ didn't come with a new doctrine. Mm. Right? Yeah. So what did it say again, brother? What did it say? The book of St. John, chapter 7 and verse 16. Okay. Jesus answered them uh -huh. and said, uh -huh. my doctrine is not mine. My doctrine is not mine, read, but his that sent me. The Father, because it's the Father that sent Christ. So Christ and the Father are like the same entity. Mm. How can he send himself? Okay, does that make sense to you? Just use common sense, brothers and sisters. Because he didn't come with a new doctrine. He said, my father's doctrine. Right. What are you doing? Verse 17. Uh -huh. If any man will do his will. Oh, his will. Now we're dealing with his will now. What is his will? See, if I ask the average so-called Christian, what's the Lord's will? Hmm. I mean, let's just keep it simple. If I was to ask you out there, what is the Lord's will? So, 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 but see, it's precepts, though, brother. 
You don't need precepts. I got Psalms 48. You got Psalms 48, brother? Because, see, I, I, I mean, we need precepts, right? I mean, understand that. Because I don't want people to think we're crazy here. Right? You already think we're crazy, but that's that's cool. But the fact of the matter is, what does it say, brother? I want Psalms 48, man. The book of Psalms, chapter 40 and verse 8. Yes. I delight to do thy will. Wait a minute. So David said, I delight to do thy will. You Christians don't want to do You don't delight in this. You say, oh, <laughs> I don't want to keep laws. Why? Hmm. So what does David say? What does the patriarch say? What does he say? It's the book of Psalms, chapter 40 and verse 8. Okay. I delight to do thy will, uh -huh. oh my God. Uh -huh. Yeah. That law is within my Oh, heart. wait a minute. The law. But what does the Messiah say? Let's go back to St. John 7. Where, 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 are we, where were you at about the will? Because the patriarch says, David, okay, the beloved, says, I delight to do thy will, oh my God. That law is within my heart. He delights in the law. But what does the Messiah say, though? What does the Messiah say? The book of St. John, chapter 7 and verse 17. Uh -huh. If any man will do his will. The law, because Christ, because the, the precept to the Father's will is the law. Because that's why we jump from precept, must be upon precept. It said, it is said precept perhaps upon precept. It said it must be upon precept. We're not done with Isaiah 28 and 9. I just want to bring that point out. So what does is, what is, what is the Messiah say, brother? The book of St. John. Chapter 7 and verse 17. Yes, sir. If any man will do his will. Do the laws. Read. He shall know of the doctrine. You should know of the what? Of the doctrine. The doctrine still dealing with laws. You know, you cannot get around the laws. The doctrine is the commandments in Christ. That's what the doctrine is. Okay? It ain't a black Hebrew Israelite doctrine. <laughs> Did Christ say the black Hebrew Israelite doctrine? No. Did David say the will, the black Hebrew Israelite wills? Did he say that? No, we're reading precept must be upon precept. Mm -hmm. Was that it, brother? He shall know the doctrine, uh -huh. whether it be of God, whether it be of the most high, or whether I speak of myself. Oh, because understand something, we're not speaking of ourselves mm -hmm. either. Because we're reading precept must be upon precept. As the Bible is written, you can't get around that. We dare you to challenge it. Mm -hmm. Come and challenge it with your rhetoric. Mm. Because guess what's going to happen? It's going to get sliced. Mm. And that's it. And, I, and we're not being boastful. We're being confident in what we're saying. Because the Bible speaks for itself. Right. We're not making this up. This ain't rhetoric. Okay? Go back to Isaiah 29, brother. Because we, we had to get you with some precepts for a second. <laughs> we still ain't done with precepts, though. Because, see, for some reason, they hate precepts. Right? What do you say, brother? Isaiah. The book of Isaiah. Chapter 28 and verse 9. Yes, sir. Whom shall I teach knowledge? That's the question. Whom shall I teach knowledge? What is the knowledge? Malachi 2 and 7, brother. What is the knowledge? Now, see, you see, you see how we deal with precept? You see how it's in, it's in chronology, it's, it's dealing with order? You see how easy the most high with the spirit to handle the situation? Okay? Because what is the knowledge that we're supposed to gain? Whom shall I make to understand? Our knowledge, right? I go get around. You can't get around. It's gonna go back to the original form. Go back. Go, to, go back to Malachi two and seven, brother. The book of Malachi, chapter two and verse seven. Yes, sir. For the priest lips shall keep knowledge. So keep the order. Oh, oh, oh. The priest lips should keep what? Keep knowledge. Okay. And they should seek the law. Oh wait a minute. I thought. Wait a minute. You sure it ain't saying seek the hallelujahs? <laughs> I want to make sure we. You should, is that what it, what did it say, brother? It say, for the priest lips to keep knowledge. The priest lips to keep knowledge. What type of knowledge? Read, brother. For they shall seek the law at his mouth. Seek the law at his mouth. So guess what? If your priest ain't teaching laws, guess what he's for? Mm. You should seek the law at his mouth. If the Messiah dealt with laws and the patriarch David dealt with laws, what are you talking about? Precept must be upon precept. Go back to Isaiah 28 9, brother. Because for some odd reason, I don't think they understand. Not gonna get around. You can't get around laws, brother, because precept means law. You wanna know why y'all hate y'all hate precepts so much? Because y'all hate laws. Right. And we're gonna find out if you really truly love the Bible. We ain't done with that yet. It's just the surface. So back to Isaiah 28 and 9, brother. Knowledge. 
doctrine, all that. Laws, 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 right? Laws, 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 um, um, what else? Knowledge, knowledge law. And then the will law. <laughs> you gotta be in order, man. You gotta be in order. You see what I'm saying? It's, it, it, you know, it's, it's a, isn't it a beautiful thing to do with precepts, y'all? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Read, brother. The book of Isaiah, chapter 28 and verse 9. Yes. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Whom shall he teach knowledge the laws? Read. And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Build on laws again, read. That they are weaned from the milk. Weaned from the milk because when a child's milk, the milk is dealing with laws again. <laughs> dealing with laws, read. And drawn from the breast. Drawn from the breast because when a child's been drawn from the breast, the child transitions to grow. Mm. Because when you draw a child from the breast, now the child will go to the next stage in life. Mm. You're weaning that child from the breast, from the laws. Now it goes to a higher understanding now. Read on, brother. Verse 10. Uh -huh. For precept must be upon did precept. Did it say, did it say, maybe it should be upon precept? What did it say? For precept must be upon precept. Wait a minute. Are you sure it ain't saying perhaps? Precept <laughs> must be upon precept. Precept must be upon precept. That's how the Bible must be read. Okay, read on. Precept upon precept. Oh, it says it again. Make sure, make, make sure you got it. First time. It's not feelings on top of feelings. Not feelings. <laughs> right, 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 right. Read on. Line upon line. Line, because line upon line. We just read one line, mm. laws, another line, laws, another mm. line, laws. Precept, precept, precept. Read. Line upon line. Line upon line again. Read. Here a little. Here a little. One little word, precept. A sentence, precept. Another word, precept. Read. And there a little. And there a little. Read on. Was that it? Okay. Okay. I had to get my little rant off. I feel a little bit. I had to wipe the sweat off my forehead on that one. Okay. To wipe the sweat off my forehead on that one. Now go back to understanding again. Give me Ecclesiastes cuts. Chapter 21, verse 11. Because you know something, man? Christians, I don't think they love the Bible, brother. I really don't think they do. So it's our job as righteous judges to judge the matter. They present the evidence. We're going to deal with the evidence, right? Who they present, we're going to produce your cause, right? So they said precepts are not needed. That was what they said. That was the topic, right, at one point. So Ecclesiastes in the Apocrypha, also they say that's unauthoritative, by the way, but it is a part of the Bible. Ecclesiastes 21 and verse 11. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 21 and verse 11. Yes, sir. He that keepeth the law uh -huh. of the Lord uh -huh. getteth the understanding. Whoa, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. He that does what? He that keepeth the law of, you, the, of you, the Lord. You keep laws of the Lord, what's going to happen? Getting the understanding thereof. That's how you get understanding, read. And the perfection of the fear of the Lord. It's wisdom. Because the perfection of the fear of the Lord is wisdom. Because you know what the wisdom is, brother? We just dealt with laws. Right? So, did you say the understanding? Go to the book of Psalms. Chapter 1, 11, verse 10. <laughs> because I don't want people to think we're cherry picking. Because precept must be upon precept. Because it says, you keep the law, you will get the understanding. Right? So, Let's go to the book of Psalms, chapter 111, verse 10. Okay? The book of Psalms, chapter 111, verse 10. Yes. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Because the fear of the Lord is the fear of judgment. How would you not know what his judgments are if you don't have laws? You have to have laws to know what the judgment is. If the Lord said, thou shall not kill, if you kill, you need to put to death. Mm -hmm. Right. How would you not know that if you don't have laws? So in order to have judgment, you must have laws, right? Mm -hmm. So what does it say again, brother? It the says, book of Psalms, uh -huh. chapter 111 and verse 10. Yes. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Because that's when you start to get wise. Wait a minute. The Lord just burnt up 3,000 people <laughs> for serving an idol. Mm -hmm. That's a judgment. Mm -hmm. The law says don't follow other gods. If we follow any other gods, the Lord's going to be angry with us. The law says don't do that. If I do that, I'm going to get judged. Guess what? That's wisdom. 
I'm not doing it. I'm not trying to die. Right? What do you say again, brother? A good understanding uh -huh. have all they that do his Oh, command. wait a minute. Are you sure we, we're getting the right understanding? A good understanding is what? A good understanding have all they that do, do his, his commandments. commandments. Now go back to Ecclesiastes 21 and 11. Because the good understanding, you must have laws to have understanding. I just gave a simple simplicity of a law. You won't serve no other gods. If I serve the other gods, God's going to hate me because I'm not loving him. Right? right. That's, simple. That's, that's simple, right? To comprehend. So back to Ecclesiastes 21 11, brother. What did it say? The book of Ecclesiastes, mm -hmm. chapter 21 and verse 11. Okay. He that keepeth the law. When, the Lord, that, when you keep the laws, right, what happened? The understanding thereof. Uh -huh. And the perfection of the fear of the Lord is wisdom. Because it's the perfection of the fear of the Lord. The perfection of the fear of the Lord is when you know, if I do this, mm. this is going to happen. If I don't do this, this is what's going to get a reward. Because, how, think about it. We went, into, we went into slavery because we broke commandments. Mm. Right. What makes you think <laughs> if we keep breaking them, mm. we're going to get out of slavery? Mm. Does that make sense? No, that's, that's, a make, that's a Christian mentality. That's a mentality that don't make sense. If I went to slavery for breaking commandments, why would I <laughs> get out of slavery for breaking them again? That doesn't make sense. Instead of keeping them, you just have to believe. You just have to believe, right? Is that what they said? They said believe, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Give me a crazy yeah. this. Uh -huh. 32 and verse 24. It says believe. We right. just have to believe. Believe in the Lord. Okay. How do you believe in him? <laughs> See, <laughs> okay, we're going to the Bible now. Precept must be upon precept. How do you believe in the Lord? Because I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. You can't believe in something and don't act upon it. I'm going to hit you with this little scenario, y'all. If you, if you work, let's say I, I have a job. Right. Let me just hit you with this simplicity. And I believe I'm going to get a paycheck on Friday, right? Mm -hmm. I believe I'm going to get a paycheck. Can I sit there and say, oh, you know what? I'm just going to chill at home. I'm going to keep believing I'm getting that paycheck and right. go to work. Right. No check coming. <laughs> you ain't going to get a check because your faith, my faith is I'm going to get a check. <laughs> but I'm not going to work and clocking in. I, I'm, not, I'm not logging in my hours, right? <laughs> right. What do you think the Lord going to do? You think you just get by just on faith? Just because, oh, I just believe in Jesus. <laughs> I just believe in Jesus. How do you believe in Jesus? Ecclesiastes, <laughs> chapter 32 and verse 24, brother. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 32 and verse 24. Yes. He that believeth in the Lord, uh -huh. take it heed to the commandments. Oh, wait, 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 wait a minute. You go about the commandments again? That dreadful word. They don't like to hear. Man. Y'all hate commandments, don't you? But guess what? That's what's going to get you out of captivity. Mm -hmm. See, that's the problem right there. See, the problem is they hate commandments because they hate precepts. Mm -hmm. Precepts is laws. That's why they hate reading precept upon precept. It's simple as that. It's one little thing. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt surely tithe. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Extortion <laughs> is what you're doing. Right. And trust and believe you're going to deal with extortion too. Now what it say again, brother? The book of Ecclesiastes, uh -huh. chapter 32 and verse 24. Yeah. He that believeth in the Lord. Who did believe? He that believeth in the Lord, read. Taketh heed to the commandment. Uh-huh. And he that trusted in him uh -huh. shall fare never the worse. You are, you're not going to fare never the worse for keeping the commandments. You can't get around not keeping commandments. There's no way believing on him, commandments. His will, commandments. Shouldn't you think about commandments? <laughs> I don't know. They still ain't convinced, though, brothers. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 4. Because mm. precepts, for some reason, just elude their minds. I love this one. Yes, sir. Yeah, you know, Jake, was, I had to save, save this one in my bag of tricks for you, bro. <laughs> I knew you loved this one, but the book of Psalms, chapter 119, and verse 4. <laughs> the, the book of Psalms. <laughs> Chapter 119 and verse 4. Yes, sir. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts. Wait a minute. Command us to what? Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. diligently. Keep the laws 
diligently. He has commanded us to keep the precepts diligently. Jump to verse 69. I don't think they heard us, brother. I don't think they heard us. Verse 69. Mm. The proud have forgotten a lot uh -huh. against me. Uh -huh. But I will keep thy precepts with a whole heart. That's what David the patriarch said. He says he's going to keep the precepts with, a, with his whole heart. Right? Jump to verse 86. The book of Psalms. Uh -huh. Chapter 119 and verse 86. Uh -huh. All thy commandments are faithful. <laughs> Wait, all the commandments are what? All thy commandments are faithful. So even if you have faith, you have to have commandments. Because the commandments are faithful. So you just can't say just have faith <laughs> with no works. Because you have to work the laws through your faith. That's the problem, y'all understand. Y'all keep thinking it's just about faith. I can have faith and get a paycheck all day. Man, I ain't going to work and logging in. I ain't getting that check. <laughs> it's the same way with the laws, man. If I, think if I want the kingdom, I have to keep commandments. Mm. You can't say faith. What did it say again, brother, about that faith? The book of Psalms, chapter 119 and verse 86. Yes, sir. All thy commandments are faith. Uh huh. Thy, thy persecute me wrongfully. Uh huh. Help thou me. Uh huh. Verse 87. Verse 87. Uh -huh. They had almost consumed me uh -huh. upon earth, uh -huh. but I forsook not thy precepts. Oh, see, you see that? They almost, they almost consumed David. But he said, I forsook, I forsook not the precepts because the precepts are the law. So the law is going to help us be delivered. Why? Because it, it couples with the spirit of Christ. You have to have the spirit of Christ on you with the laws. It don't make no sense to say, I got, I got, I got the Holy Ghost. But you eating a pork chop sandwich. <laughs> I got the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> they don't even know what the Holy Ghost is. Right. You right about that. Jump to verse 100, brother. The book of Psalms, mm -hmm. chapter 119 and verse 100. Yes, sir. I understand more than the ancient. He understands more than the ancient. Why? Because I keep thy precepts. What? Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. David says. And we know David walked with the Lord. Mm -hmm. David was a man of the Lord's own heart. Mm -hmm. And what is the what is the patriarch says? David says, brother, the Book of Psalms, chapter one nineteen and verse one hundred. Uh -huh. I understand more uh -huh. than the ancient uh -huh. because I keep thy precepts. He understand more than the ancients. Do you realize how much knowledge that man had to have? The ancients, brother. The ancients. Do you? I don't think I understand Abraham. Isaac. What? He understands more than the ancients because of precepts, because of laws. That's the Father's will. Jump to verse 93. 93. Verse 93. Uh -huh. I will never forget thy precepts. You <laughs> he will forget what? I will never forget thy precepts. There's that nasty word again. Y'all don't want to hear that. For with them, uh -huh. thou hast quickened me. Because they changed the brother. So with the precepts they do, they change us. Okay? It convert that will convert you if the priest of the laws. Read on, brother. 94. Verse 94. Uh -huh. I am thine. Uh -huh. Save me. Uh -huh. For I have sought thy precepts. Uh -huh. Verse 95. Now, now he said, Save me, I sought thy precepts. That's all I want. I mean, if you don't understand precepts by now, you don't understand. <laughs> They are offending, aren't they? What, 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 what does Christ say about that? Give me the book of um, give me the book of Matthew eleven and six, man. A lot of people are offended by precepts. If you're saying that we're not supposed to go by precepts, then you're fighting against God, and that's basically who you're fighting against. See, if we're commanded to keep that precept diligently, matter of fact, I skipped the I sk I skipped the scripture, bro. I skipped. I skipped. Oh, you mean your favorite one? You, you, I skipped one. Uh, Psalms one nineteen one oh four. Yeah, your favorite. I don't one. know how did I skip that one. See, Jake, I got caught up, man. I got caught up, but you know something? That's what happens with this word. This Bible's a big book. Okay, <laughs> you understand mm -hmm. that? So now, I sorry, I skipped one, man. One oh four. The Book of Psalms, chapter one nineteen and verse one oh four. Yes. Through thy precept. I get understanding. Through the precepts, I get understanding. So through the law, even David just said, through the precepts, he understands more than the ancients. And we're commanded to keep the precepts diligently. 
And then what does this say again, brother? Therefore, I hate every false way. I hate every false way. How do you know a false way without precept? The law is defined on what evil is. Right. Because if I'm, if I'm, how do I know what righteousness is without precepts? How do I know what evil is without precepts? It don't make sense. So, on, so if someone tells you no precepts, you better pack your things and you were prompt to leave. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You better pack your things and you better leave because guess what? They're the damn devil. Because let me ask you a question. Where have you ever seen the Holy Bible the devil told you to keep commandments? The devil never told you to keep commands. Cause that was, that was gonna call us the devil, right? Y'all, y'all the devil. Y'all, 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 y'all gotta keep us in bondage. How do we keep you in bondage when the laws get you out of bondage? What should what should make you free? No, no, no. They love to quote that scripture so much. What's gonna make us free? Well, then, uh, mm -hmm. Christ. Mm -hmm. Mountain, mm -hmm. Satan came up there to tempt him. Uh, Why he ain't trying to teach him commandments? Right. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> In fact, Christ was hitting the devil with commandments. Right. Right. He was trying to teach Christ to break it. <laughs> you know something, y'all? You know it's sad? The simple believer that it was, doesn't mm -hmm. it? It's sad because you know something? We were there one time, y'all. At one time, we were just like you. Right. I want to hear it. To the most I could smack you upside your dog on the head. You know what I'm saying? That's when you have to start learning, though. You have to learn to be humble. That's the problem. They don't want to be humble. Okay? They don't want to say, let me learn. They think they already know. Okay? That's why they keep me clumped on the head. So let's go to our brother, the book of St. John, 8 and 32. The book of St. John, chapter 8 and verse 32. Uh -huh. And ye shall know the truth. And you should know the truth. We know what the truth is. Back to laws. And what, and how should, what should it do to you? And the truth shall make you free. The truth. So that so the laws free you. They don't put you in bondage. I know what it is. They go to Paul. They think they know about Paul. Did Paul ever tell you? Paul kept commandments, didn't he? Last I checked, we're gonna deal with some commandments Paul kept. They're gonna run to Paul all the time. But I'm not done with these commandments yet, brothers. I just I just I'm just not done. Give me the book of St. Matthew 5 and 17. Because Christ says, says this out of his own mouth. Mm. So I don't know how y'all can get around this because this written in red. Mm. Last I checked. Right? Because they don't follow Christ, they follow Paul. Right, right, right. But see, Paul's going to find the Paul is any different from Christ. Right? <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's amazing. So the book of St. Matthew 5 and 17, brother. The book of St. Matthew, chapter 5 and verse 17. Yes, sir. Think not that I am come to destroy the law. Because Christ understood that he came to give grace and mercy. He said, don't get it twisted. Just because I came to give grace, don't think I came to destroy the law. Don't get it twisted. Read. All the prophets. Mm -hmm. I am not come to destroy. He didn't come to destroy, read, but to fulfill. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, you know, he fulfilled everything, brother. Keep reading. That's fine. He fulfilled everything. Verse 18. Yes, sir. Verily I say unto you. So seriously, Christ says, Verily, verily I say unto you, read. So heaven uh -huh. and earth pass. Heaven and earth is still here, right? One jot. One jot. Or one tittle. And one tittle shall in no wise uh -huh. pass from the law. Uh -huh. Till all be fulfilled. Oh, wait a minute. Did all be fulfilled yet? Has all been fulfilled yet, you so called Christians? I tell you one thing that hasn't been fulfilled yet. The book of Isaiah, chapter 66, and verse 5. <laughs> Let's find out if all is fulfilled. Because they always going to say, man, you know what, man, he already fulfilled that. He already fulfilled the law. Let's find out if all is fulfilled, y'all. See, precept must be upon precept. You see why it's important to have precepts, y'all? Let's find out if the Messiah fulfilled everything. Because what a lot of y'all don't know, 66, verse 15, what a lot of y'all don't know is, even when Christ come back, it's still going to be some prophecies that have to be fulfilled. Right. That's what y'all don't understand. Y'all think everything will be fulfilled when Christ come back. No. When Christ come back and purge the earth of wickedness, stuff still has to happen. But let's find out if this is fulfilled yet. <laughs> the book of Isaiah, chapter 66 and verse 15. The book of Isaiah. Chapter 66 and verse 15. Yes. For uh -huh. behold, uh -huh. the Lord will come with fire. Did the Lord come with fire yet? 
last I checked, it ain't fire outside yet. Everything's still here, everything intact, right? Really? And with his chariot. I don't see no chariots. I don't see the whole sky covered with the angelical ships yet, right? Really? Like a whirlwind. Oh, we didn't see the tempest come down. That's when, when Christ come back, y'all. It's gonna be something you've never seen before in your life. Mm -hmm. No movie can no movie can simulate this, y'all. You ain't never seen this before. Read. Mm -hmm. With his chariots, excuse me, uh -huh. to render his anger with fury. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Christ is gonna be angry when he comes back. We ain't seen a big black man come out the sky yet. We ain't seen that yet, right? Read. And his rebuke with flames of fire. That fire ain't came yet. Read it. What else can happen yet, brother? Verse 16. Uh -huh. For by fire uh -huh. and by his sword uh -huh. will the Lord plead with all flesh. Uh -huh. And the slain of the Lord shall be made. Oh, it said shall be. So that means it's future tense. Mm -hmm. That means it hadn't happened yet. Go back to Matthew chapter 5, brother, in verse 18. Because you know something? It says one jot and one tittle shall no wise pass the law to all be fulfilled. That hadn't happened yet. So guess what, y'all? Laws are still here. Mm. Guess what? Guess what? Let's find out some more lies. <laughs> Keep reading, brother. Back to Matthew. 17. Yes. No, go back to go back, go to 19 now, because you already hit 18. Yes, mm -hmm. The book of St. Matthew, chapter 5 and verse 19. Uh -huh. Whosoever, therefore, shall break one of these least commandments. Wait a minute. So wait a minute. I thought commandments were important. Christ says, who there short, whosoever shall break one of these least commandments, read. And shall teach men so. You know how y'all teach men so by telling them don't keep commandments? By walking around, break commandments willingly. This is coming from the Messiah's mouth, y'all. We ain't making this up. Read. He shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. You're not going to be least. That means you're going to get put to death. You ain't getting the kingdom. But read on. What's the flip side, brother? But whosoever uh -huh. shall do. Oh, should do. Wait a minute. I thought it was the worst. I thought it was going to work. Whoever should do what? So what did it say? Whosoever shall do, do. and teach them, uh -huh. the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So that means if we keep the commandments and we teach the commandments, we should be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Wow. That comes from Christ's mouth, right? Mm. That's the precept. Right. <laughs> All right. Okay. I look at uh, verse yeah. 19. Yes, sir. Say, mm -hmm. And they should be called least. In the kingdom of heaven, mm -hmm. see to people that don't have understanding, mm -hmm. they're gonna try to get that least spot, <laughs> but they don't understand that that means you're gonna miss the kingdom exactly because you're being lazy. Because you're like, Oh, I could be least in the kingdom, right? I'm cool with that, right? Right, right, right. <laughs> we're we're trying to do it. That's how see David said he'll be a doorkeeper. No, right? No, that's not. no, it's a similar to what David was saying. Right. It don't mean a literal, a literal doorkeeper, that's foolish, right there, y'all. That means all Israel is going to rule. Right. So you're not going to be the least. Right. Okay. But that's the problem with people. Once again. Right. Give me St. John 1 and 17, bro. Because the, for some odd reason, they think that they think we're crazy, mm. which is beautiful. I mean, I love it. Mm. You know? Because at the end of the day, they thought the disciples were crazy too. Mm. But that's beautiful, though. You know? They think we're crazy. Oh, you black evil Israelites. <laughs> Y'all just love to hate people. Where to get that from. Oh, I know where to get it from. <laughs> their own mind. Their own lust. See, they don't like truth. They hate truth. Mm -hmm. See, they love lies. See, Christianity or Christian insanity is fused with paganism and lies. Nothing they do, they can, they can actually prove to us why they do it. Simple as that. So what does it say, brother? St. John 1 and 17. The book of St. John. Chapter 1 and verse 17. Yes, sir. For the law was given by Moses. Oh, the law was given by who? By Moses. Uh-huh. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Oh. So not only was you getting grace, you getting truth at the same time. Still law. Still getting law. You still get laws. So you can't just say, I live by grace. Mm. You have to keep laws and grace. Because mm. when grace run out. And you ain't keeping laws, guess what's gonna happen? Game over. Mm. We're gonna deal with the game over part too. What's gonna happen to the game over people? Mm. Okay. Now, grace and truth came by Christ. Right. The, the law was given by Moses, which he did give us the laws, mm -hmm. but Christ coupled it. Mm. You couple it with Christ, right? Now let's go to the book of St. Matthew, 
Shout, no, matter of fact, no, 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 no. Let's go back to the patriarch David, man. I love to go back to David. Go to First Kings two and one. Mm -hmm. Read one already three. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to the patriarch David. Cause see, for some odd reason, I understand what it is to be a man. Right. Right. They so busy walking around with butt face. They so walking around, don't want to wear their beards out. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they're shining and glitching. Yeah. You know. But see, understand something. The four, our forefathers were men. Okay. They were mighty men. Keep that in mind. See, that's the problem. But what does what does David say to his son Solomon? Set for, uh, what is it? Second, First Kings two and one, one through three. The book of First Kings, mm -hmm. chapter two, verse one. Uh huh. Now the days of David do not because David it was time for David to die. So David was given his son, who was Solomon, instructions how he must carry himself. Right? Read that he should die. Uh -huh. And he charged Solomon his son. He charged him. He didn't say, well, you know, son, uh, maybe you should do this. <laughs> maybe you should, son. Perhaps. <laughs> no. He charged him. Read. Verse 2. Uh -huh. I go the way of all the earth. Because he understood David's time was at hand to give up the ghost. To go gather into his people. Read. Be thou strong, therefore. He said, be strong, therefore. Read. And show thyself a man. And show thyself a man. Read. Verse 3. Uh -huh. And keep the charge. And do what? And keep the charge. What charge he charges him with? Read. Of the Lord thy God. Uh -huh. To walk in all his, excuse me, to walk in his ways. Uh -huh. To keep his statutes uh -huh. and his commandments. Oh, wait a minute. To keep his what? His statute and his commandments. And his commandments. So show yourself a man of the Lord and keep the commandments. That's how we must conduct ourselves as Israelites. Okay, that's the problem. See, no one wants that order. They're scared of that. Okay, they are offended in that, unfortunately. But you're going to learn it tonight, though. You're going to learn tonight whether you like it or not. So let's go to the book of St. John 14, 15. Because we're, we're going to Christ. We're going to the, the, the Lord, right? We're supposed to follow Christ. He is our example. That's what the word Christian means, right? It means follow of Christ. So if Christ does something, we do it, right? Okay. Simple, simple, simple. It's pretty simple, okay? So St. John 14, 15, brother. The book of St. John, <laughs> chapter 14 and verse 15. Yes, sir. If you love me. If you do. He said, if you love me. So it's conditional. He said, if you love me, read. If you love me, uh -huh. keep my commandments. Wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, wait. He said, if, because if you don't love me, mm. you ain't keeping commandments. Mm. Well, he said, that's a conditional. That means if you buy me this, if you buy me these pair of shoes, I'm going to love you. Right. If you don't, <laughs> I'm going to hate you. Right. But Christ says, if you love me, do it. What, is, what, is, what does the Messiah say? The book of St. John, uh -huh. chapter 14 and verse 15. Uh -huh. If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. Simple as that, right? But how do you love the Father? First John 5 and 3. See, you know, it, 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 it keeps it, it's love. We're just going to love. Right? We love it. We, I, we, you brothers don't teach love. That's y'all problem. See, y'all brothers, y'all yell at people. That's all y'all do, yell and scream at folks. That's <laughs> all y'all do. I'm about to say that when he be going, ah. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. He yelled at Oh, the two sign of being a Christian. <laughs> right, 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 right. Glory, glory. glory. <laughs> you know, I mean, we listen, we're going to mock because you know what? It's sad because every time we try to talk to y'all, y'all want to listen. Nothing you're doing out of scripture. Exactly. It's straight up. And nothing that you're doing out of the scripture. So what does it say, brother? The book of 1 John, chapter 5 and verse 3. Yes, sir. For this is the love of God. This is the love of God. So now you keep saying, how do we love the most high? Who is it tie back to? <laughs> Who is it that we keep his commandments. Oh, well, we keep his commandments. Oh, wait a minute. So you sure the love, read, read, keep reading, bro. The book of 1 John. 
chapter 5 and verse 3. Yes, sir. For this is the love of God, uh -huh. that we keep his commandments. Okay. And his commandments are not grievous. They're not grievous because what happens, like, 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 like David said, mm -hmm. he delights to do thy will. Right. So you delight in the commandments. You're, it's not grievous to us. We love the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. We love not eating any abominable thing because we holy people. Mm -hmm. We love when our friends, because you know what? The Lord said, put your fringes on. Our women love to, 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 to wear the, the modest apparel and look beautiful. Because why? Because the Most High says to do it. You see? That's not grievous. Right. You love to do what the Lord told you to do. It don't make sense to say, I love God and don't keep his commandments. Right. It don't make, it's a contradiction. You're lying to yourself. Oh, but they think we done lost our dog on mine. Mm. First John 2 and 3. The book of First John, chapter we, 2. We're going to deal with love for a second. And verse 3. Uh-huh. And hereby, we do know that we know that we know him. Oh, you know what? It's about personal relationship. I know me some Jesus. I know Jesus. He said we, it's about relationship. We're supposed to know him, right? First John 2 and 3 again, brother, what did he say? The book of First John, chapter 2 and verse 3. Yes. And hereby we do know, we do know that we know him. We do know that we know him, right, Reed? If we keep his oh, commandments. Right. It says if, though. It's a condition. Again, it's because it said we do know him if we do what, Reed? If we keep his commandments. Oh, wait a minute. Commandments again in the New Testament? Mm -hmm. Are you sure we read from the right book? Because it said, hereby we do know if we, if we know him, if we keep his commandments, read. Verse 4. Uh -huh. He that said, I know him. He that said, I know, I know Jesus. Got I got a personal relationship Jesus. with Jesus. They say it with every episode. <laughs> I heard that today at the food. Did you hear it today, brother? Say, so you have to have a relationship with Jesus. You have to have a personal, personal relationship, relationship with, with Jesus. Jesus. Right? Mm -hmm. They say it with, with, with emphasis. What did it say, brother? What did it say? He, just, he that said, I know him, mm -hmm. and keep it not his commandments. Oh, keep it not his commandments. That's that word again, commandments. Keep it not his commandments. What is he? Is a liar. He, oh, he's a what? Is a liar. The Bible calls him a liar. So if you ain't keeping commandments, pastor, <laughs> you a liar. So John 15, 14. Keep reading. <laughs> and the words not in there? And the truth is not in him. <laughs> the truth is not in him. <laughs> that means you have no truth in you. Right. So I don't care how you hoot and holler, bump dance, all that, all that nonsense you want to do. The bottom line is you don't know Christ. And the best way to know him is keep his commandments. Right. The Bible is clear cut. That's why they hate precepts, brother. They hate precepts. See, you brothers, precepts. Hate precepts. <laughs> Context, brother. We <laughs> all not in these scriptures. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but they, but they Christians though, right? You supposed to follow Christ. Give me Saint John 15, 10. Let's find out if they really do follow Christ. Let's find out. You see how we go? We navigate through the scriptures. We navigate through the Spirit of Christ. Navigates through the scriptures. That's how you're supposed to do it. You're supposed to navigate through the scriptures, right? Yeah. St. John 15 and 10, brother. The book of St. John, chapter 15 and verse 10. Yes, sir. If you keep my commandments. See, you see what it said? If you keep my commandments, read. You shall abide in my love. Hear what Christ says. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. It's if again. It's a conditional love. It, it, it ain't that agape love, they say. What's that agape love? It, 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 ain't that Greek for, uh, what, they, what they call it? Agape love? Is that what they, is that what they call it? <laughs> A copy. Right. Now you can't even find anybody. That sounds homosexual. It does too. It does. It does. It does. It does. It does. No, no, it does. So you're right though. Because you know what I'm saying? Because listen, I, I have to do it. I said, let me, I said, man, what is a copy, man? What, what is all that? In Greek, it might be gay. <laughs> right. He said, he says, he says, he says, brother, it's unconditional love. I said, man, where is it at in the Bible? He couldn't show me. I said, I don't know what you're talking about, brother. But what, what, is, what does the Lord say? The, the book of St. John, chapter 15, verse 10. Yes, sir. If you keep my commandments. If you keep my commandments, read. You shall abide in my love. Uh-huh. Even as I have kept my father's commandments. Wait a minute. Christ. Wait a 
Christ kept the commandments. You're not going to get away from the law. You can't get away with it. Give me. Now, let's find out who else kept the commandments. I'm going to make sure I ain't losing my dad on mine. Give me the Psalms, chapter 103, verse 20, brother. The book of Psalms, chapter 103, and verse 20. I'll get it. Because for some reason, the Messiah says, if you should abide in his love, keep his commandments, even as he has kept his father's commandments. Let's find out who else kept the commandments. The book of Psalms. Chapter 103, verse 20. The book of Psalms, chapter 103, and verse 20. Yes, sir. Bless the Lord. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. His angels that excel in strength. Uh huh. That do his <laughs> commandments. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why are the, why are the angels doing the commandments? Because <laughs> you have to be in order. You got to be in order. That's right. You have to be in order. Do you honestly believe that you will stand before the most high? And be out of order. <laughs> you can't even go to white man's court and be out of order. Man, keep, man. Mess around and go up in there with some sunshades on, try to be cool off if you want to. <laughs> Mess around and go up in there with your pants sagging, brothers, if you want to. I guarantee you they will escort your butt out. Be in charge. And be in charge, exactly. <laughs> so at the end of the day, what makes you think? You can go to anybody, you can go to the most high who is or listen, it's complete order with the most high. You're not getting out of order. The, pre, the, the commandments represent order, brothers and sisters. Because without commandments, there's no order. Let's just keep it real. Because if you think about it for a second, you got rules to live by. I don't care where you go. You got rules and regulations. You break rules, you got penalties, right? Mess around over the, the man's court and get out of order if you want to get you a contempt. So if that man, he's an unrighteous judge, and he got his own commandments, what make you think the righteous judge don't have commandments? The angels keep, who else keep the commandments again, brother? I just want to make sure they have to understand. The book of Psalms, chapter 103, verse 20. Uh -huh. Bless the Lord. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. His angels that excel in strength, uh -huh. that do his commandments. The angels, the angels do the commandments. Christ does the commandments. But yeah, but if you're not keeping the commandments, yeah. you're probably not an angel. Huh? Right, right, <laughs> right, right. Let me finish it off. Hey, go ahead, finish it up, bro. Hearkening uh -huh. unto the voice of his word. So his word means keep the commandments. All day. All day long. Mm. Evidence presented, Christianity on trial, you fell in miserably. Because <laughs> for some odd reason, we're going precept upon precept. The Bible is basically <laughs> proving that somebody's lying. Okay? You think they're going to try to go for an objection? You can't object to this. Oh, Give me a <laughs> 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 Yeah, yeah, go, go to verse 14. Because they say they got a personal relationship with Jesus. Uh huh. You friends with him, right? 14 and John 15. Yeah, John 15, 14. The book of St. John, chapter 15 and verse 14. <laughs> ye are my friends. <laughs> if ye do whatsoever, I command you. So if you ain't keeping commandments, you're not a friend, you're of, a friend of Christ. You're a friend of Christ. Very important. Because it's amazing, isn't it? Jesus is a friend of mine. But I ain't keeping no <laughs> commandments, though. <laughs> <laughs> that don't even make no sense. That don't even make no sense, man. You know, it's sad. It's sad that y'all think that way. Right. But you know what's scary, though? Give me Proverbs 19.16, bro. Give me Proverbs 19.16. Because, you know, we're going all up and down the Bible with this. The book of Proverbs, chapter 19 and verse 16. Uh -huh. He that keepeth the commandment keepeth his own soul. <laughs> you hear what the Bible says? You didn't keep the commandments, keep your own soul. So that means you keep yourself in destruction. Because judgment will come upon you if you don't keep the commandments. Mm -hmm. I don't care how you cut it. And we, we, we finish up, brother. He that keepeth the commandment, mm -hmm. keepeth his own soul. Uh -huh. But he that despises his ways uh -huh. shall die. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. What, 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 what the flip side? What do you say? But he that despises his ways mm -hmm. shall die. So cover your ears up with the commandments if you want to. The end is death. Mm -hmm. 
So that's what we keep trying to tell y'all in a nice way, according Ooh. to the scriptures, okay? Mm -hmm. Straight up. Because, see, they think they're getting the kingdom, though. But he just said Jesus 50 million times. What is that? How many, how many hallelujahs do they have to say? I don't know. I heard a bunch of them today. You heard a bunch of hallelujahs today, right? At least 10. And they also said that, that your, is it your uncle? No, it's my neighbor. Your neighbor? They, did they say he was already in heaven already? Yeah, they said he was he was going to be in the kingdom of heaven. Did he keep any commandments? No. Nah. He keep the commandments, right? No, nah, I personally saw him eat crab legs for like two hours straight. You did? <laughs> give me my give me Matthew 19, 16. Cause because for some odd reason, Christians think they can eat a pork chop sandwich and still jump into heaven. <laughs> right? That I can eat me some crab legs and some some stoked crab legs and 1916. Let's hear what the Messiah have to say about getting the king. The book of St. Matthew, uh -huh. chapter 19 and verse 16. Yes, sir. And behold, one came and said unto him, uh -huh. Good master, uh -huh. what good thing shall I do? And I that I may have eternal life. That's the question we must ask. Read on. Verse 17. Uh -huh. And he said unto him, uh -huh. Why callest thou me good? Because Christ understood that he was good, but he was like, Why callest thou me good? Christ was humble enough to say, look, man, you don't have to call me good. Right. Okay? He didn't want no title. Right. Christ understood who he was. Read on. There is none good but one. One. That is God. That is the most high read. But if thou will enter into life. Right. There's that word again. If. <laughs> it's a condition. It's a conditional. If you do what? But if thou will enter into life. If you want eternal life, what must you do? Keep the commandments. Wait, 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 wait a minute. You sure they ain't saying how many hallelujahs? Keep the commandments. Keep the commandments, man. That's what the Bible says. The Bible is clear cut. So, do you really truly, do you truly, truly really mm. love the Bible? I don't think so. Mm. But the Bible is against your doctrine. Right. So you, you cannot love, you cannot love a lot. It's a lie. Mm. Let me show you another lie they tell us. You know, a talking snake. For some reason, remember the dude said on the um, on the telecast, he said, if Satan could put the spirit in a snake to talk, it was a pastor that said that, man. Like, what? I shook my head. I said, apparently he didn't yeah. read the scripture. Yeah, no he had no understanding, right? Let's find out if it was a talking snake that day, that dreadful day. Because I'm going to ask you a question. If a snake rolled up on you right now, start talking. Are you gonna carry on conversation with me? <laughs> <laughs> you can sit there and talk to the snake. <laughs> because it's crazy to even think that. That's why people don't take the Bible serious, y'all. Right. Because they make the Bible to a fairy tale. And that's the sad part about it. That's why the precept must be upon precept. Let's go to Genesis, man. Let's go to Genesis chapter um. Three and verse one. The book of Genesis, chapter three and verse one. Right. Now the serpent was more subtile than any beast of the field. Right. So, so the serpent was more subtile to any beast of the field. Right. Read on. Which the Lord God had made. The, the Lord God created Satan. So that's how you know he creates good and evil. Okay. So that's what people understand. He created Satan. Right. What did it say? And he said unto unto the woman. Uh huh. Yeah, hath God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? So, so a snake talking to Eve now, right? <laughs> but he said a beast. He said beast. Give me Ecclesiastes 3 and 18. Let's find out what beast is talking about. Because I don't think a snake was going to sit there and talk to Eve. And she's going to sit there and carry on conversation with a snake. Because if she did, something ain't right. <laughs> something is not right. So. Ecclesiastes mm -hmm. chapter 3 and verse 18 because it says the beast is more subtile than any other beast in the field, right? right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's, that's that's why we have to go through a precept to find out what the word beast is talking about. The okay. book, mm -hmm. Ecclesiastes mm -hmm. chapter 3 and verse 18. Yes, sir. I said in my heart uh -huh. concerning the estate right. of the sons of men mm -hmm. that God might manifest them uh -huh. and that they might see that they themselves are beasts. beasts. They themselves, because you understand something, the beast is talking about is a man. Well, let's go to the book of Matthew 23 and verse 33. 
and give me Matthew 3 and 7 because these two, these two noble men said something. Okay? Because the talking snake theory is off, is off the chain. It's crazy. Give me, give me, somebody give me 33, 23, 33, and give me Matthew 3 and 7. Because we're dealing with that, we're dealing with what Christ and John the Baptist said. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. The book of St. Matthew, uh -huh. chapter 3 and verse 7. Yes, sir. But when he saw many of the Pharisees. Because when, because see, they was coming to the baptism. Because when he saw many of the Pharisees coming to his baptism, this is John the Baptist, right? Read. What did John the Baptist But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees uh -huh. come to his baptism, uh -huh. he said unto them, uh -huh. O ye generation of vipers, uh -huh. who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Wait, what's a viper? That was a snake. Were well, you talking to a snake? No. Well, we're talking to a man. Talking to men. Right. He's talking to men, right? Correct. But he called them snakes. That's right. Let's follow what Christ called them too. The book of Matthew, chapter 23 and verse 33. Uh-huh. Ye serpents. <laughs> ye generation of vipers. Uh -huh. How can ye escape the damnation of hell? So Christ calls them snakes and vipers. He calls them vipers and snakes too. So they think that now you understand that it ain't talking about a um, snake talking. Talking about deceitful, deceitful men. men. Because they have the characteristics of a snake. Because mm -hmm. a snake is very cunning. Mm. If you watch a snake, you watch if you watch a snake, a snake, he's very cunning how he gets his prey. Mm -hmm. But how did how did Satan come to her though? Give me 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14. How did this doggone demon come to Eve that faithful day? It wasn't just that one day. It was over a period of time. Okay. So 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14. The book of 2 Corinthians mm -hmm. chapter 11 and verse 14. Uh -huh. And no man marvel. And no marvel. Don't be surprised. Yeah. Don't be surprised. And no marvel. Uh -huh. For Satan himself it's transformed into an angel of light. Oh, so what it's showing you, brothers and sisters, is Satan ain't going to come at you the way you think he's coming at you. Right. He comes at you with the Armani suit on, mm. with that nice smelling cologne, with that nice sweet talk. Hey, brothers, mm. how you doing, brothers? With that smile, how you doing? Shiny head. Shiny head. Shiny head and, you know what I'm saying? Hey, you know what, you know what, brother? You have to understand, brother. You know, we have to love each other. You know how, you know? You know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, and then in Israel, though, I'm, I'm not going to let Israel off the hook either. Because y'all come, because our brothers do the same thing sometimes. Yeah. You know, how, how about nice crispy beer? You know what I'm saying? Nice fringes, man. Look fresh. But see, it's what's, what's, what's in your spirit. See, that's the thing people understand. This is the nature of the man. That's what Christ was just called in the Pharisees and Sadducees. He was saying, you generation of vipers. So when Satan came at Eve, he came at her as an angel of light to right. deceive her. That's what the word devil means to deceive. We're not deceiving nobody. Right. How, who are we deceiving? All we're doing is showing you precept upon precept. That's not deception. Because whatever you come to us for, we can, we can prove everything out this Bible. Believe that. And I'm not saying that with, with any type of um, arrogance. Right. But what I am saying is, is we are reading this Bible the way it is written to our people. And we have to come out of these simple doctrines. That's why we are in the, in the sick situations that we're in. Because we, what we do, we don't study nothing. Okay? They, the pastor tell you something, you just run with it. You don't never you can question us all day. Pastor said. Pastor said. You never question nothing. You just sit there and just take whatever he tells you. But you call us the devil though. But he didn't want to take your money. He extorted money from you all day. But they think God and um Christ is the same entity, right? Right. Oh. I we heard did, 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 didn't one of the um pastors tell you that one time? Oh yeah, I mean it's what do you say? I, my favorite part of that is just listening to him try to explain uh -huh. how Jesus and the Most High are the same person. Okay, let's find out. Let, let's find out if they are the same person. Because for some odd reason, the Trinity, as a matter of fact, the word Trinity is not even in the Bible. Right. <laughs> it's
is sad, y'all. Is you know what's sad is we just accept everything this man gives us and we just wrong with. Don't never study now. Give me First Timothy chapter two verse five. First Timothy in the New Testament chapter two verse five. I got one scripture. Come on. Okay. All right. The book of First Timothy chapter two and verse five. Yes, sir. For there is one God. Oh, there's one what? For there is one God. One God. Three. And one mediator. Uh between God and men, uh -huh. the man Christ Jesus. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I thought Jesus <laughs> and the Most High was the same. What does it say again, brother? Make sure we make sure we heard it correctly. The what book of First Timothy, mm -hmm. chapter two and verse five. Yes, sir. For there is one God, it's one God, and one mediator, one mediator. Between God and man. Between God and man. The man, uh -huh. Christ Jesus. Simple arithmetic. If you can count. The last I checked, they said one God, mm -hmm. one mediator, and one man. We're dealing with Christ and the Most High. Two entities. Right? Okay. First Corinthians 11 and 1. Let's deal with the, let's deal with the heavenly order. <laughs> The book of 1 Corinthians, <laughs> chapter 11 and verse 1. Yes, sir. Be ye followers of me. So he says, so this is Paul speaking now. Paul said, be ye followers. We'll do with Paul too. He said, be ye followers of me, read. Even as I also am of Christ. Indeed, read. Verse 2. Uh-huh. Now I praise you, mm -hmm. brethren, uh -huh. that ye remember me in all things. Remember me in all things, read. And keep the ordinances. Keep the laws again. So Paul said, keep the ordinances. Ordinances are laws. Why is Paul saying keep laws if Paul if Christ did away with the laws? Don't make sense. Go back, goes back to laws again. Read on. As I delivered them to you. As I delivered them, because Paul delivered the law to the churches. He delivered the law, the ordinances. Okay? That's what Paul did. Paul was an evangelist. He was the most traveled apostle. Read on. Verse 3. Uh-huh. But I would have you know. I would have you know, read. That the head of every man is Christ. Oh, the head of every man is Christ. He's given us the heavenly order, read. And the head of woman is man. The head of the woman is the man, read. And the head of Christ is God. I could, I could Christ be the head of himself. It don't make sense, right? So Christ can't be the most high because there's one mediator, one God, right? Let's go to St. Matthew 27 and uh, 46. <laughs> We're say Matthew. You know, it, this stuff is so simple, y'all. But because y'all don't want to study nothing, don't want to read nothing for yourself, you just take whatever they tell you. See, the Trinity is something they came with in Catholicism, y'all. Mm -hmm. Catholicism is killing our people in so many different ways because y'all don't study nothing. Mm -hmm. Okay? You, you let these pastors tell you, oh, okay, call them father. Christ says, call no man on earth your father, but you follow along with it. Don't never go to the scriptures. The scriptures clearly tell you what's up. Mm. But because y'all don't want to study, y'all want to follow man instead of following the Bible, that's the problem. Mm. Read on, brother. The book of St. Matthew, chapter 27 and verse 47. Uh huh. Some of them, 46. 46. 46. 40, for, verse 46. Uh huh. And about the ninth hour, uh -huh. Jesus cried with a loud voice. Because Christ on the cross now. Right? Read on. Saying, Eli, mm -hmm. Eli, uh -huh. Lama Sabathia. Uh -huh. This is to say, uh -huh. my God, uh -huh. my God, uh -huh. why has thou forsaken me? Why is he crying to himself? He's crying to the Father. Is he saying, he's saying, my God, my God, has thou, why has thou forsaken me? If Christ was the Father, why is he crying to himself? Mm -hmm. He's on the cross of agony. He's speaking the pure language, by the way. Mm -hmm. Pure language, brothers. Some of you got brothers think they got the pure language. He speaks the pure language, and nobody understood it. Everybody thought he was speaking something else, mm. including the Pharisees thought, oh, he must be called for logic. Mm. So it shows you, brothers, you don't have the, you don't have the language, okay? <laughs> that proves that point. Now, let's go to Matthew 3 and 16. Because we're dealing with the Trinity now. You know, we're dealing with the Trinity. A little bit. The book of St. Matthew, uh -huh. chapter 3 and verse 16. Yes, sir. And Jesus, 
when he was baptized, went up straightway uh -huh. out of the water. Uh -huh. And lo, uh -huh. the heavens were opened uh -huh. unto him, uh -huh. and he saw the Spirit of God uh -huh. descending like a dove uh -huh. and lightning upon him. Right. Verse 17. Uh -huh. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, uh -huh. This is my beloved Son, uh -huh. in whom I may well please. Uh -huh. this, is my, this is my beloved Son. So, huh? Christ is in trouble. Right, exactly. <laughs> Right. So the Father speaking from the heavens while Christ just got baptized and they took they saw the, the spirit that descended like a dove. Why would Christ be speaking to himself? It doesn't make sense. So the evidence, the conclusion, another lie. Another lie. Guilty as charged. I got a couple. Go ahead, brother. Hey, can you go to Second Corinthians eleven verse thirty one? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, it's sad because, like I said again, brothers and sisters, see, this is what this is what studying comes to. We have to constantly get into these scriptures and see for what it really is, y'all. Not based on how we feel and we think. Okay? That's the problem when we feel the rhetoric that's being pushed out here. Okay? The rhetoric. Oh, you know, I think, brother. I feel. You know, ain't what you feel is what it is. It's <laughs> right. it is written. Okay? The book of Second Corinthians, uh -huh. chapter eleven and verse thirty-one. Yes, sir. The God mm -hmm. and Father mm -hmm. of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. The God and Father uh -huh. of our Lord Jesus Christ. The God mm -hmm. and Father. Uh huh. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Clear cut to me. Yeah. Right. Very clear cut. What's, what, what's, what's another thing they said? They said that mm -hmm. Christ wasn't created, right? Mm -hmm. You're still right. Yeah, they said he wasn't created. Right? Uh -huh. That's why he was God. Right. What why Why was he made a little bit lower than angels? Right. When you go to Hebrews chapter 2, verse 16. When you go to Hebrews 2 and 16, why was it, why would it say that? If, if he wasn't created, why was he created this way? Because the most I created the angels, right? Mm -hmm. Hebrews 2 and 16 for a second. You, you can cast in all the lies. Right? Right. What it says. The book of Hebrews, chapter 2 and verse 16. Yes, sir. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels. Now he didn't take on him the nature of angels, right? Read on. But he took on him the seed of Abraham. Oh, wait a minute. The seed. So that means he came in the flesh. Mm. I feel it. The seed, right? He came on the, as the seed of Abraham. Seed comes from the man. Seed right? comes from a man, right? All right. On verse 17. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Verse 17. Uh-huh. Wherefore in all things, uh -huh. it beloved him, excuse me, it behoved him uh -huh. to be made like unto his brethren. <laughs> it made like to his that means he came in the flesh. Mm -hmm. That means he didn't come in immaculate deception. Because it deceived you. You see, that's the problem right there. Yeah. <laughs> Can you go to Isaiah 45 and 11? Uh huh. Isaiah 45, 11, brother. Because, see, the problem is, see, guilty is charged. Christian insanity is charged with lies. So they said he was not created. He was not created, right? They said that, right? They okay, well, the Bible cast out on the lies, right? The Bible's speaking, and we ain't speaking it. We just read it, right? Okay. Isaiah 45, 11, brother. The book of Isaiah. Chapter 45 and verse 11. Yes, sir. Thus said the Lord. Thus said the Lord. Thus said the Lord, read. The Holy One of Israel. Who is the Holy One of Israel? It's the Christ. Oh, All day. All right. Read it from the top again. Mm -hmm. The book of Isaiah. Uh -huh. Chapter 45 and verse 11. Okay. Thus said the Lord. Uh -huh. The Holy One of Israel. Uh -huh. And his maker. His who? And his maker. <laughs> I thought he wasn't created. And his maker uh -huh. asked me of the thing to come concerning my son and concerning the work of my hand, command ye me. He said, and his maker. Ain't that something? Romans 1 and 3 for a second. Give me Romans 1 and 3. Romans 1 and 3. Romans 1 and 3. The book of Romans. Chapter 1 and verse 3. Uh -huh. Concerning his son, uh -huh. Jesus Christ, uh -huh. our Lord, which was made of the seed of David. I thought he wasn't made. <laughs> he was made of the what? Of the seed of David. He was made of the seed of David. So guess what? <laughs> he came from sex. 
to the virgin birth, guess what, y'all? That's off too. That's another doctrine of Catholicism came up with. And you want to know why they came up with it, y'all? Because they want to try to say that Christ never had a nationality. That's why they want to do it. Right. See, see, all these lies, that's of the devil, y'all. That's right. deception. See, see, devil only means deceiver. Right. So when you deceive people, it's a it's a um it's a spirit behind it, it's an agenda behind it. Because if I want to deceive you, it's something I'm hiding an agenda behind it. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Understand that. But you know something, man? Get these women pastors out here. Wow. Mm. Women pastors. We got it. We, we got to do it. We got to do it. <laughs> Give me the numbers. <laughs> Chapter 27, verse 16, man. Because you know something? Christianity love to push this right here. You're not the Adam. You're off. But it come up out of it. Right. Come up out of it. Number 2716. I mean, it, it looks like we're really going in on our people, but what we want them to do is to repent. Right. That's what we want. Oh, we'll get to that. Because, see, repentance is something that, see, what we have to do first is cast down lies first. Mm -hmm. See, the repentance part going to come when they when they go back. See, what we, we, we want our people to do is go back and study all this. Mm -hmm. Right. Do it for yourself. See, don't take what we say. See, we don't want you to take what we say. Right. We're trying to get you to open up your eyes and see this for yourself because that's the same thing we had to do. When I had to, when I saw this stuff, I was like, wow, this is the truth. Right. I saw it. I said, you know what, man? They've been lying to me. Right. And I didn't get offended. I took it. I said, you know what? I was, I was lied to. You know what? All praises. And you gotta start asking when you realize you're lying. Right. Then you gotta ask yourself why. Why? Why are they lying to me? Why they got all these different doctors within a within a doctrine? Ain't that crazy? Right. All these doctors we just touched on is in the same dog on doctrine Christianity. Mm -hmm. Women pastors, Numbers twenty seven sixteen, bro. The book of Numbers, chapter twenty seven and verse sixteen. Yes, sir. Let the Lord, God of the spirit of all flesh. Uh huh. Set a man over the congregation. Oh, okay. So the man over the congregation read verse 17. Uh -huh. Which may go out before them, uh -huh. and which may go in before them. Okay. And which may lead them out, and which may bring them in. Uh -huh. That the congregation of the Lord be not as sheep have no that excuse me. A sheep that have no shepherd. Right. Because remember something, most shepherds, all I've seen shepherds is men. I've always seen shepherds as men, right? Now, am I saying to be chauvinistic with the women? No. But what I am saying and what the Bible says is order behind everything, okay? You have the man, you have, you, have, you, have, you have the most high, you have the Christ, the Israelite man, the Israelite woman. Simple as that. You can't get around that. So how can a woman usurp the authority over the man? When the most high gave, he ordained the man to be the leader. Straight up, you can't get around that. If, you, if you're against that, you're against the most high. Because we didn't set that up. We didn't make that up. He's all about order. About order. Now go to the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Now go to Saint, the uh, first man, uh, first Timothy, chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. <laughs> to make sure it ain't changed. Because some people think, think, oh, it's the New Testament. The Bible is outdated, brothers. That's that's an ancient book. Man, people hate this scripture, man. Men oh, and women. That's okay. There are even men that hate this. Uh -huh. I know. I know men. You know why? Because they are feminine. <laughs> they just keep it real. Like, oh. They are feminine. Okay? And we're going to deal with how the Lord feels about being a feminine too. Mm. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Come as you are, right? We're going to find out how you're supposed to come. We're going to find out real quick. Okay? Now, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 11 and 12, brother. The book of 1 Timothy. Uh-huh. 1 Timothy. First Timothy, yes, sir. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. The book of First Timothy, chapter 2, verse 11. Yes, sir. Let the woman learn in, in, in silence. The Bible says that the woman learn in silence, which means she shouldn't be up there trying to teach the congregation. It don't mean the sister can't talk. It just means that she cannot be up there, you know, trying to usurp the authority over the man. But the man said the man's supposed to be there teaching, and the woman's supposed to learn in silence. Right. Okay? That is what the scriptures say. Read on. With all subjection. Or all subjection to the scriptures. Just, you know, you're supposed to be in order according to the scriptures. Read on. But I suffer not a woman to teach. Oh, he does what? I suffer 
not a woman to teach. I allow not a woman to teach. Read. Nor to usurp authority over the man. So guess what, sisters? If you're doing this, come out of it. Come out of it. Because you're out of order. Okay? That's not your position. Okay? You cannot do that. The Bible just said you're out of order. Okay, you can't usurp authority over the man because the man that's his ordained position straight up. You can't get around that. And that's what a lot of these women try to do in these so-called Christian churches because they are like the men allow that. The men, you know something, the men know it's wrong, but they do it anyway. They follow, oh, you know, I don't want to get her upset. Well, look at the Jehovah's Witness. Right. When you they have the women going door to door. Right. I, I rarely see the men. And I, I at one time a man came to my door with the woman. She go on talking. I asked, I said, sis, excuse me, but why this man ain't talking? Well, I, 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 I said, no, 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 wait a minute. I said, sis, the scriptures, she ain't want to hear that. I said, wait a minute. I said, sis, I'm not trying to be, I'm trying to be, I'm not trying to be disrespectful to you, but the scripture says this. Right. She got upset. Ah, okay. Keep getting upset. Go to, go to the book of Revelation, <laughs> chapter yeah. two and verse 18. You keep on being upset, we're gonna find out what's gonna happen to your mind if you don't change. Okay. The book of Revelation, chapter 2 and verse 18. Right. And unto the angel mm -hmm. of the church in Thyatira. In Thyatira. Because at this time in Thyatira, this church right here, it was allowing women to leave this church. Oh, yeah. We know how it's at. Let's find out how the most high feels about that. Right. Uh -huh. These things said the Son of God, uh -huh. who hath his eyes. Like unto a flame of fire. Oh, because Christ is looking at all this. The Son of God, the Christ, right? Read. And his feet are like fine brass. Uh huh. Same, same characteristics. It's the same mm -hmm. Jesus, like fine brass, right? Brass is brown, as it burned in the front, which means he was a black man. Right. Straight up, read. I know my, I know thy works. Uh huh. He said, I know thy works, read. And thy and charity. Uh huh. And service and faith. Uh huh. And thy patience. Uh huh. Excuse me. And thy works. Uh huh. And the last to be more than the first. Uh huh. Notwithstanding, uh -huh. I have a few things against thee. I have a few things against thee, Reed. Because thou sufferest that woman, Jezebel. Uh huh. Excuse me. Which calleth herself a prophet. Oh, because you that you heard? That, that sounds familiar. Oh, I'm a prophetess of the Lord. Call herself a prophetess. Let me read. Yeah, good, good, because my man had a little bit of issues going on. Yeah, you are, you good? good? You good? Okay, all right. What did it say again? But call herself a what? Which calling herself the prophet. Uh huh. To teach and to seduce. Now, man, it says to teach and seduce. So it's saying, I suffer, I allow her not to teach men. Mm. This is the congregation is talking about. Read on. What it says? To seduce my servants. Because you seducing the servants by lying in that simple doctrine. You're seducing the men. You don't supposed to do that. You you usurp you serving authority. That's why he said Jezebel. That's that spirit, right? right. Read to commit fornication. Because so you commit fornication now. Because what's happening? A lot of those things are going on in that church right there. Read on. And to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Oh, don't they do that? They definitely do that because they ain't keeping no commandments. Read on. And verse twenty-one. Uh huh. And I gave her space to repent. Gave her space to repent. That's why we're trying to tell us, sisters, sisters, if you're doing it, you're getting space to repent now. Come out of the ways of that lifestyle. You should not be leading men in a congregation. Straight up, okay? If you get mad, get mad. Because the Bible says so. Read. To repent. To do what? To repent. To repent, read. Of her fornication. Uh-huh. And she repented not. She didn't want to repent because that pride. I'm a prophetess. I don't know what you're talking about. Who you who you gonna talk to me? No, no. The Bible says that, sis. Read. Behold, uh -huh. I will cast her into a bed, uh -huh. and them that commit adultery with her. With her. So if you wanna keep on following along with it and rolling with it, what's gonna happen to your mind? Read. And them that commit adultery with her uh -huh. into a great into great tribulation, uh -huh. except they repent of their deeds. Uh huh. Except they repent of their deeds, then you you you're gonna get put to death. Straight up. Ain't no getting around it. But they run to Paul though. They run to Paul. They better, they better start a movie with Paul. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. Mm -hmm. but I need I need the zombies with I need the zombies for this one. Okay, give me the book of Acts. <laughs> Chapter 21 and verse 37. Because for some reason they run to Paul. If all else fails, let's go to Paul. Right. <laughs> right. 
If all else fails, let's go to Paul. First century. Give me Acts 21. But go to the book of my go to um go to hand. Go to hand. I, I want to prove a point. Uh, Acts 21, 37 and 38. 38. Yeah, yeah. The book of Acts, <laughs> chapter 21 and verse 37. Uh-huh. And as Paul was the lead, was was to be led into the castle. Uh-huh. He said unto the chief captain, uh-huh. May I speak unto thee? Uh-huh. Who who said, Canest thou speak Greek? Because remember, Paul could speak Greek. Why? Because Paul had understood Hellenists. The Hellenists period with the Jews that was in Greece, in Asia Minor during that time. Paul could speak three languages. That's the tongues he could speak, which was the Hebrew. Why? Because he was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. And he spoke Greek. Why? Because the Israelites were scattered within Asia Minor. Right. And he could speak Latin because he was in Rome. Right. Read. Verse 38. Uh-huh. Art not thou that Egyptian? Oh, the, why would they call Paul an Egyptian? What does the ancient Egyptians look like? Go to Zonal Compact Bible Dictionary because the scholars know this much. So if they call him Paul an Egyptian, and Paul's in Rome now. A lot of Edomites in Rome at this point, right? Hmm. So if he mistake Paul as an Egyptian. What does the ancient Egyptians look like? This is the, the Zondervan <laughs> Compact Bible Dictionary. Yes. And the definition is of Ham. Uh huh. The youngest son of Noah. Uh huh. Born probably about 96 years before the flood. Yeah. And one of eight persons to live through the, the flood. Uh huh. He became the progenitor of the dark races. Uh huh. Not the Negroes. So guess what? The Negroes are not really Africans. Newsflash. We're Israelites. Thank you very much. Hebrew. <laughs> but the Egyptians. So whoa, 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 wait. So the Egyptians are dark. What do they call Paul again? The book of Acts, chapter 21 and verse 38. Uh-huh. Are, are not thou that Egyptian? Huh. Are thou that Egyptian? She calls Paul an Egyptian, so Paul had that dark skin. Just like Moses. Just like Moses. Right, because Moses didn't live as Egyptian, right? Mm -hmm. So the beginning of the dark races dealing with Ham, right? Another live cast now, right, brothers? Let's keep going. I, I'm starting to love this more. <laughs> Go to the book of Romans, chapter 11, and verse 1. Because, mm. see, they want to try to separate Paul from being Israel, too. Mm -hmm. Right? So let's find out what Paul says. Paul says it's out, says it's out of Roma. The book, the book of Romans, chapter 11 and verse 1. Yes, sir. I say then, uh -huh. has God cast away his people? See, that's the question that he asked because that was a lie. Has God cast away Israel? They still said it today. Yep, that same lie is still in the earth. Uh -huh. Oh, God cast away Israel. Yeah, he did away with it. Did he? Hold that. Hold, no, no, no. No, no. We're going to clear this up. Give me the book of Jeremiah, 31 verse 35, <laughs> man. Because, 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 see, yeah. the reason why Paul is even saying this is because of the scripture. Paul, see, a lot of y'all don't know Paul dealt with the Old Testament because he was writing the New Testament when he was living. Hmm. Most of the New Testament Paul wrote. So, Paul dealt with the Old Testament, which means Paul dealt with law. Mm -hmm. So, behold that, hold that, and we're going to go, go, hold Romans 11 and 1, but go to um, Jeremiah 31 35. The, the book, book of Jeremiah. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. The book of Jeremiah, yeah. chapter 31 and verse 35. Yes, sir. Thus saith the Lord, uh -huh. which giveth the sun for a light by day. You see the sun on the day, right, Rick? And the ordinances of the moon and of the stars for a light by night. You see that all the time, right, Rick? Which divideth the sea mm -hmm. when the waves thereof broke. Uh -huh. The Lord of hosts is his name. Yes, sir. If the ordinances depart from before If me, these ordinances that you see, the sun, the moon, the stars, if they depart, read, saith the Lord, uh -huh. then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation so, before me. So guess what? We're still here. That's why Paul says, this is the Bible, Romans 11 and 1. That's why Paul said that. Paul asked that question, has God cast away his people? What did he say? The book of Romans. Chapter 11 and verse 1. Yes, sir. I say then, uh -huh. have God cast away his people? Uh -huh. God forbid. God forbid. Read. For I also am an Israelite. Wait a minute. What is, what is Paul again? For I also am an Israelite. Paul is an Israelite. Read. Of the seed of Abraham. The seed of Abraham. Because he's giving his lineage now. Read. 
of the tribe of Ben. He gives you his tribe. So guess what, brothers and sisters? It is important to know who you are. Because why would Paul say that specifically if it wasn't important? Paul didn't say, I'm a Christian. It doesn't matter. <laughs> why didn't he say, uh, Jew, no Greek? Jew, no Greek, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. But let's clear it up, though, brother. Let's go to the book of Philippians, chapter 3, verse 5. Mm. Because Paul says this. I'll make sure, Paul, I'll make sure you know what's going on. Because if, if your nationality wasn't important, why is Paul saying this? Why is Paul giving you his tribe? Why is he giving you his nation? Why is Paul doing this if it wasn't important to you? Right? Why is, I, why is Paul doing this? So let's go to the book of Philippians, chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. The book of Philippians. Chapter 3 and verse 5. Yes, sir. Circumcised the eighth day. Oh, so that means Paul kept laws. He was circumcised on the eighth day, and Christ was circumcised on the eighth day. Oh, yeah. He's a follower of Christ. So he's going to keep commandments. If Christ got circumcised, Paul's going to get circumcised. Right? That's a law. Let me tell you something. Didn't, didn't what the Moses, wasn't the laws around them talking about Abraham? Mm -hmm. didn't, so Abraham was getting circumcised, right? Right. Moses was getting circumcised, right? Mm -hmm. Christ got circumcised, right? Mm -hmm. So Paul got circumcised. So guess what? Laws ain't done away with. Mm -hmm. Keep reading. Circumcised the eighth day. The eighth day, because he did it in order. On the eighth day, right, the way it was ordained. Read. Of the stock of Israel. Oh, the stock of what? Of the stock of Israel. I thought your nationality would mean nothing. The stock of Israel, read. Of the tribe of Benjamin. There we go again. Tribe of Benjamin. So he's saying tribe of Benjamin. The stock of Israel the tribe of Benjamin. Why is Paul saying all this? Why is it even important? If your nationality is not important. Mm. This New Testament people. Mm. New Testament. Was that it, brother? No. Nah. Keep going. And Hebrew of the Hebrews. A Hebrew of the Hebrews because he understood where he came from. He was a Hebrew of the Hebrews, read. As touching the law? Touching the law because he was raised in the law under Gamaliel. Gamaliel was a master of the law. So when Paul came up through Gamaliel, he came up through the strictest set. So he's letting you know, I came up through the Hebrew of the Hebrews. He was a what? Touching what? As touching the law? Uh -huh. A Pharisee. A Pharisee because they were the strictest what? The strictest set. So that's who Paul showing you who he is. So it's important to know your lineage. It's important to know who you are. Why? Because what part are you going to play in the prophecies? That's why you must know who you are, brothers and sisters, because people keep saying it don't matter. It does matter when Christ comes back. You better believe that. It's going to matter. You better be an Israelite, I'm going to tell you. You better be an Israelite that's repenting. That's all I have to really tell you. Okay? Now, let's keep going. Give me, give me the book of Acts, chapter 8, verse 1, because they always say the church was persecuted. The church, the Christian church, what they say? Right? They said Paul was persecuting the Christian church. Right. Is that what they were saying? Yeah. Okay. The book of Acts, <laughs> chapter 8 and verse 1. Right. And Saul was consenting unto his death. Because Saul was consenting to the death of Stephen. So Stephanus was being killed by our people who was being wicked because they were being cut. Okay? So they killed him. Okay? And he saw the glory of the Mosiah in Christ. That's how you know you're about to die when you see that glory. And Saul, which was Paul, Saul being destroyer, because Paul was consented to his death because Paul at that time hadn't been illuminated yet. So he was consented to the death of Stephanus because he was given license to do harm to the church, right? Let's find out where the church, where is the church at? Because Christianity won't say the church, the church, the church, right? Mm -hmm. Wait. And at that time, uh -huh. there was a great persecution uh -huh. against the church. Uh -huh. Which was at Jerusalem. Oh, where, where was the church at? Which was at Jerusalem. Who's in Jerusalem? The Israelites. So the church has always been Israel. It never had them to do with Christianity. Christianity wasn't even around during this time. Christianity didn't even come into effect in the third century. The Edict of Thessalonica. That's why Paul, when Paul wrote a certain way in, in, in uh, Thessalonians, he had to write a certain way. The mystery of iniquity that I've already heard. <laughs> right. Paul was telling you. Paul was explaining you with Christianity. He said, this stuff is about to come to pass. It's already, it's already <laughs> here. <laughs> so they keep thinking, oh, I'm going to Paul. Paul was one of us. The third century, y'all, when during this time, 
Christianity, see, that's the problem with y'all. Y'all never do y'all research. Right. You, you're going to your theology schools. Give me 1 Corinthians 3 and 18 for a second. Y'all go to y'all little theology schools. Y'all ain't, or y'all, well, just, because, just because we don't have a, a fake piece of paper on our wall, mm. don't mean we ain't ordained. You, and let me tell y'all something. Y'all think this man's wisdom is the wisdom of the most high? Huh, please, think again. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, brother. The book of First Corinthians, chapter 3, and verse 18. Yes, sir. Let no man deceive himself. Don't be, don't deceive yourself, brothers. But that's the problem. We get deceived by this man's doctrines. You know, we get deceived by his education. Okay, because we think his education is above the most high. I don't think so. Read. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world. Because that's when they, they do, they wise in this world. Oh, I want the theology school. Who cares? You ain't learning nothing. Mm -hmm. You ain't right about that. All you learn is all you learn. All you learn is how to be oppressed even more. Because all this man gonna do is keep lying to you. He ain't gonna tell you who you are. How is he? How is he gonna benefit you by telling you who you are? Right. Don't even make sense. That's against all logic. If I got you an oppression, I'm gonna keep all the things from you that keep you out of oppression. It don't make sense, right? Keep reading. Let them become a fool. Uh huh. That he may be wise. We become a fool to this man's foolishness that we may become wise by keeping the commandments. Verse 19, brother. Verse 19. Uh -huh. For the wisdom of this world uh -huh. is foolishness with God. So guess what? All your theology and all that nonsense is foolishness. Because your theology say a talk is slick. Your theology say Lucifer was a beautiful angel and he fought with God and got beat up. He got kicked out of heaven. That's what y'all theology say. Then, what else did theology say, man? What, 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 what if the Most High say about the wisdom of this world? What did he say? For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. It's foolishness with God. That's foolishness, y'all. That only makes sense because when you don't read precept pre pre upon precept, that's why y'all mess up. But see, they think for some odd reason, Paul was the laws, right? I'm not going to be too much longer, y'all. Romans 6 and Romans 6 and 1 and give me Romans 3 and 31. Because <laughs> that's finally what Paul had to say about all this, y'all. Romans chapter 6 and verse 1. He run to grace all the time, right? What does Paul say about grace? The book of Romans, chapter 6 and verse 1. Yes, sir. What shall we say then? Uh -huh. Shall we continue in sin? Uh-huh. That grace may abide. Because he says, shall we keep breaking the breaking the commandments because we're under grace? It don't make sense. What did he say? Read. Verse 2. Uh -huh. God forbid. God forbid. No. That don't make sense because I got grace. I'm going to keep on breaking commandments. That don't even make sense. What did he say? Read on. How shall we uh -huh. that are dead to sin live any longer therein? How you going to live? Listen, you're supposed to be dead to sin. You're supposed to be a new creature in Christ. So, Romans 3 and 31. The book of Romans, chapter 3 and verse 31. This is Paul speaking. Do we then make void the law through faith? Do you, do you then make void the law through faith? Because faith is keeping the commandments still. Read. God forbid. God forbid, no. Yes, we establish the law. We establish the law by keeping it, brothers and sisters. That's how we do it. We establish the laws by keeping it, but they say, come as you are. Last couple of scriptures, y'all. <laughs> come as you are. Come as you are. That's what they say, right? Come as you are, brother. Okay. That's, that's fine what God said about that. First Corinthians, <laughs> chapter six, verse nine. <laughs> Let's find out if you're supposed to come as you are. Okay. <laughs> Let's find out how you come as you are. Because I ain't seen no scripture like that yet. Right. I ain't see, where that scripture at, brother? Have y'all, can anybody show me the scripture where it says, come as you are? Might be in the book of Jasper. The book of First <laughs> <laughs> Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9, man. The book of First Corinthians mm -hmm. chapter 6 and verse 9. Yes, sir. Know ye not that the unrighteousness shall not inherit. Wait a minute, if you're unrighteous, what makes you righteous? Give me, give me, give me Deuteronomy 6, 25, brother. Because you said, un since you have to be unrighteous, right? Right. Not to keep the kingdom. Mm -hmm. But what makes you righteous? 
Isaiah, I mean, um, Deuteronomy mm -hmm. 625, man. He said, unrighteous, he said, the unrighteous, right? Mm -hmm. Shall not, which means future tense. So, Deuteronomy 625. The book of Deut hold, on, hold on to that, though. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6 and verse 25. Yes, sir. And it shall be our righteousness. It shall be our righteousness, read, if we observe to do all these commandments. It's conditional. It should be our righteousness if we keep the commandments. Yep, like you said earlier. You keep saying that if. 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 It's a conditional. It should be our righteousness if we keep the commandments. Mm -hmm. Was that it, brother? If we observe to do all these commandments uh -huh. before the Lord our God. The Lord our God. As, what? as he hath commanded us. As he commanded us, because as you know, he gave the Israelites the commandments. Mm -hmm. Straight up. Nobody else got the laws but us. Mm -hmm. That's how he loved us so much, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. And guess what? We're not done. We're still here. So 1 Corinthians 6 and 69 again, brother. The book of 1 Corinthians. Chapter 6 and verse 9. Yes, sir. Know ye not that the unrighteousness shall not inherit the kingdom because of God. Because if you're not keeping commandments, you're unrighteous. So keeping commandments is righteousness. And if you don't, it's unrighteous not keep commandments. Which means you're evil. Right. Read. Be not deceived. Don't be deceived because the devil deceives you by making you think don't keep commandments. Mm -hmm. That's being deceived. Right? Read. Neither fornicator. A fornicator is someone that does what? Commits a crime against marriage. Such as what? Stepping out, going out, messing with multiple people, sex partners, and also fornication is dealing with other nations. That's fornication too. Because you're not supposed to do that. That's fornication. Okay? Pedophilia, fornication. Read. No adultery. Ad someone that follows idols, such as men. White man Jesus is an idol. You follow, keep on following an idol. Read on the, the cross, the idol. Read. No adultery. If you're adultery, if you're stepping out on your wife or your husband, okay? That's an adultery. Read on. No effeminate. Oh, no. What? No effeminate. So don't be bending your wrists and snap your fingers and stuff like that. See, that's being effeminate. Okay? The most I don't want. You can't come as you are here. See, because you won't get the kingdom. The Bible says yeah. if you're effeminate, you're not getting the kingdom. Meaning you won't be delivered. That means you'll be delivered. Yeah, delivered. Right? <laughs> Read. No abusers of themselves with mankind. Lesbians. So you sisters walking around with your pants sagging and acting like you a man, you better change that. Because guess what? You're going to get put to death. The most I ain't playing no games with that. You see what I'm saying? So you keep on walking around and tell us to come as you are if you want to. Read on, brother. Verse 10. Uh-huh. No thief. Oh, so if you're a thief, you're stealing from folks all the time. Oh, yeah. They do a lot of stealing all the time. Read on. No covetousness. A strong desire to want something in there that's not yours. A lot of that stuff goes on in our communities. Read on. No drunkard. Oh, you want to get drunk? Oh, you drink up, drink. I drink to that. <laughs> Read on. No rebel. A rebel is a party. Clubbing, going from club to club, party, party over here, party over there. That's a rebel. Read on. No extortion. Oh, yeah, they do that. They do that a lot. They extort money out the people with the Bible. You better give me your tithe money, or you should ask your pastor. Pastor, did Christ ever tell us to tithe? Because you want to find tithe and offering in the New Testament. You will never find it. So you should ask your pastor, Pastor, what did Christ tell us to tithe? No. You want to know why? We'll deal with tithing some other time. We don't have enough time to deal with that. But we just want to let you know. So was that it, brother? No. Kingdom. No extortion. Uh huh. Shall inherit the kingdom of God. You won't get the kingdom. So if you if you fit all these um different characteristics, you would not get the kingdom. But last scripture, give me the book of Revelation, chapter twenty one, verse eighteen. To finish it up. <laughs> <laughs> huh? You want to read that one, Jake? I know you love that one. You love that one, Uncle Jake. Let's go with it, brother. <laughs> twenty one A, brother. We have to deliver it with fire, because that's what's coming. Okay, I don't think they know. I think they think that when Christ comes back, he's gonna hand out little prizes with cracker jacks on. <laughs> you know, they thinking when Christ comes back, it's gonna be a game. You know what I'm saying? It ain't gonna be no game when Christ comes back. I'm so, I'm gonna walk up to my Lord. Yeah, I'm gonna walk up to my Lord. I'm gonna, I'm gonna shake his hand. You can't even go to Donald Trump and shake his hand. How are you gonna go to Christ and shake his hand? It ain't gonna work. Okay.
So what's going to happen? The Revelation, chapter 21, and verse 8. The book, the Revelation, chapter 21, and verse 8. Yes, sir. But the fearful, if you fearful, okay, you, you got that, that fearful spirit on you, okay, you don't want to go to the, go do the work of the Most High, and fearful about it, read on. And unbelieving. And if you don't believe, you don't believe in the scriptures as it is written, you ain't believing and keeping commandments as it is written in Christ, unbelieving, read. And the abominable. Oh, for anything abominable, even for being a homosexual, um, all these different things is abominable. Mm -hmm. All these, that's abominable. That's a the, the detestable, filthy thing the most I hate. Mm -hmm. Read. And murderer. Oh, so if you're a murderer, you want to go around killing your own brothers and sisters, well, you're going to get that too. Read. And hormones. Oh, so you're up there being player, player. Bouncing from this one to that one, right? Read. And sorcerer. Oh, you want to participate in sorcery such as black magic, witchcraft, horoscopes, all these different things, palm reading, tarot cards. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Read. And idolatry. Oh, you want, oh, there we go again. Idolatry again. Idol worship is anything you put above the most high. Idol, money, people, anything you put above the most high. Read on. And all liars. And all what? All liars. Didn't we just point out some lies in Christianity? That's all Christianity is. We just point, we, didn't we just point out some lies? So if you're in the midst of lies, what's going to happen? Shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. So guess what, brothers and sisters? If you are in the midst of all this and you hate the Bible, that means your end, your end is going to be burnt up. Mm. <laughs> Unfortunately. So we pray you repent, mm. come out of the ways of this foolishness, mm. because this is for your own good. Okay, yeah. We're not trying to go in on people like that. But we have to let you know, as brothers and sisters, how serious this really is. Because if you hate the Bible, the most I hate you. Straight up. I don't care how you cut it. So the book of Acts. What you about to say? You hate his laws, he hates you. Exactly. Exactly. You know something? They do hate. They, wait a minute. Wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Wait. One more. One more. I got one more. I got one more. Proverbs. I want Proverbs 28 9. They always want to pray. They always want to pray. Lift up the prayers. Right? <laughs> They think, they think, oh, we're just going to pray. It's all about me, bro, man. <laughs> Dang, man. It's all about, man. <laughs> Proverbs 28, 9, man. Last year. The book of Proverbs, chapter 28 and verse 9. Yes, sir. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law. If you want to hear the law, read. Even his prayer shall be an abomination. So that means that's your prayer is an abomination. So we know what's going to happen to all abominations in the end. We get burnt up. <laughs> See, even your prayers, they're not going to get answered. They get burnt up at the same time. The book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 29. The book of Acts, chapter 5 and verse 29. Yes, sir. Then Peter uh -huh. and the other apostles answered and said, uh -huh. we ought to obey God rather than men. And that's who we must obey, brothers and sisters. We must obey the Most High in Christ and these scriptures rather than the silly rhetoric and ideologies of men, okay? We, we want to give the most high Christ all the praise and glory for just allowing us to even be in this truth, to even be able to elaborate on the scriptures, okay? Because that, that's truly a gift for the most high Christ. We thank the most high Christ for this, okay? Um, it's about him. Now, does anyone have any questions? Was everyone clear in tonight's class? Everyone good? It, 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 People aren't muted all the time. Shalom. Shalom. Most high praise bless. Most high praise bless, brother. Great class, man. Okay. I have one thing to say. Yes, sir. I put it in the pool. I put it in the pool. I know that's right. <laughs> so, uh, I pity the fool too. So that's they, they, they definitely fools and don't keep the commandments, that's for sure. <laughs> Yes, sir. Is everybody good? Everybody good tonight? Yes, sir. Great class. All right. All praises. All praises of the Most High Christ, y'all. Thank you. Huh? All praises. All praises. Well, like I said, everybody, um, y'all stay strong. Um, we know our redemption is nigh. Mm. <laughs>
you know, just hold on for a little bit because we know Christ is coming back, you know. Uh, like I said, I want to thank everybody for being on, being on tonight's class. I pray everybody stay strong and just, you know, stay safe, okay? With that, one, I want to say shalom, most high Christ, best to everybody. Shalom. All right, shalom, family. Shalom, man.